I'd like to welcome everyone to this week's edition of Software Spotlight, your front row seat to the latest innovations in software for small business. I'm Michael Burnsweig, your host, and each week we are joined by executives at leading software companies to get an insider's perspective on the emerging technologies, business strategies, and market trends shaping the future. Tune in to stay ahead of the curve on leveraging software to boost productivity and growth in your business. Be sure to visit our website, softwareoasis.com, to access our free weekly software newsletter, and be sure to sign up for our upcoming 2024 software webinar series. Today, we're actually joined by Dean Matthews. He's the founder and CEO of On The Clock, an employee time tracking software company with over 20 years of experience designing and developing business apps. Dean has grown On The Clock to serve 18,000 companies worldwide. He is passionate about using technology to simplify workforce management and frequently writes about the future of work for publications like Built In. So with that, welcome to the podcast. Hello, Michael. Thank Very you nice for having to... me. Super excited. Yeah, Very nice honest. to have you here. Yeah. I, I know a lot of um a lot of our listeners have been uh following the evolution of your solution and uh, I have to say six months on the internet is uh is 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 a while and uh years on the internet you're you're like an old dog on on the internet that's uh amazing you you were yeah. one of the, one of the first yeah i i feel sometimes when we talk about 20 years i i i feel a little bit antiquated um however you know the funny thing is is that when we started it was really just me and it was more of a passion project back in 2003 2004 era sure and um it was uh uh, that same passion project for probably about 12 or 13, 12, 12-ish years. So it was, it was a that passion project. And along the way, I was doing other things. So we really only turned into what I would call a real company probably about seven or eight years ago. So we still feel like we're in that startup mode, even though we're, we're in older software. So yeah, it's, we're kind of like, we're mature, but we're young. So it's, it's kind of sure. a cool place to be. No, nah, absolutely. And yeah. obviously with the number of uh, companies and, and users on the platform, you know, mm -hmm. that, that speaks, uh, speaks volumes. And, uh, I had a, a chance to, uh, read quite a few user reviews, uh, of the solution online and people seem to really love the platform. So that obviously speaks volumes as well. Can, can you give me an idea? I mean, you said it was a, uh, a, a project of passion and personal interest. Can you give me an idea of how you uh, came to start the solution and um, a little bit of your background? Sure, absolutely. So I am a developer and an entrepreneur by, by just what I am. Um, sure. So I had been a consultant in the Metro Detroit area. Uh, I would write software, anything from MRP systems to accounting systems to inventory systems for maybe a couple dozen local companies. Um, and, but along the way, I always had kind of the passion to do my, my own product. So uh, being kind of nerdy, it was uh, late 2003, uh, it was probably before Christmas. So uh, sometime in December, I was sitting at my kitchen table and I was looking through these accounting forums, you know, um, accounting and small business forums. Do you remember sure. those? Um, they're still around, by the way. Um, and I noticed this trend where these accountants and small business owners were just complaining they couldn't find an online time tracking system. Um, so I was just kind of reading through it and I was like, you know, I could build that. Um, and literally the next day started and, you know, being a developer, I, I could, I could just uh, use as much of my time as I wanted to do that. And about four months later, five months later, uh, April, May of 2004, on the clock launched, and it took about a couple days and some SEO, and, and we got our first client uh, just a few days, about a week later, maybe. And um, uh, fun fact, uh, this wasn't our first client, but Feral Hair, they, they do hair replacement. They are uh, down south somewhere. 
Um, they were, they signed up with us in 2004 and they are still with us today. So they, oh, that's be, fantastic. they are almost 20 years old. So we're thinking about doing wow. something kind of special for them. So, there you go. Yeah. They were like client number seven or eight or something like that. Yeah. That's, so that's pretty cool. And no. so that's how it started. You know, I was honestly just reading through the forms and I saw this problem and I was like, I, we're going to solve that. And, uh, you know, launched and, you know, like we were saying, it was a passion project for all those years. And, you know, now we're sitting at uh, 18,000 customers and there's 23 of us, uh, a team of 23 that runs on the So at, at a, a high level, are most of the companies rolling the solution out uh, across one location or multiple locations? Or, or what do you typically say for, for an install? Yeah, the majority would be single location, okay. um, but we definitely can see that they are rolling out in multiple locations, uh, but that would be the minority for sure. So, Sure. And yeah. does, does the solution scale well? I mean, do you see small operations versus large organizations using the solution as well? It well, so the solution is built for SMBs. So okay, we we looked at the market. I looked at the market and saw. Any, I don't know the numbers then, but you know now there's 33 million uh, SMBs out there. Um, so it is really designed for the one to two hundred and less uh, employee range. Although sure. we definitely have we have customers, some of them uh, with three and four thousand employees. Um, so, it, it, you know, we definitely have the larger accounts, but we are geared more towards that less than 100 to 200 mark. Well, you're, you're on the right podcast because our software, software spotlight community is SMB executives who are looking to figure out technology and mm -hmm. how to, um, you know, integrate it into, into their operations. So that, that's great. Um, when, when you originally came up with the concept, was it a desktop type app or was it a, a software as a service or what was it originally and how did it evolve to where it is today? Sure. Yeah, it, it was definitely not desktop. I knew we wanted to go software as a service, although it wasn't called software as a service then. It was called uh, multi-tenant, if you remember that. <laughs> sure. Um, yeah. So, uh, but yeah, it was, uh, we called it web-based back then. Uh, okay. So it was, yes, yeah, so it was a web-based system. We didn't have a phone app or anything at that time. Uh, I think phone apps were, you know, just getting started around that time. So, yeah, web-based. Interesting. And when when you were getting things started originally, um, would, so that was the original intention was to, to have an online solution that people could log into to, to manage their time time tracking can can you talk about the solution itself and you know what the core functions are and how companies are using it sure absolutely um so the 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 core feature is clock in and clock out for the employee right so that's 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 the what we, what we would call the core feature um an employee can clock in and out on their phone so they can download the app uh, they can clock in and out on a web browser if they are in an office solution. Um, and they can also, we also have uh, some biometric options as well that they can use to clock in and out. So that's the, the main feature. You know, along with that, uh, we do PTO management, paid time off management. So employees can request paid time off, managers can approve it. So that's a really, that's one of our second uh, most popular features. Okay. Um, with well, with phone, a lot of managers are worried about uh, uh, GPS, so they they, they want to make sure employees are on site and uh, not not at home, of course, uh, when they're yeah. logging in, unless they're working from home. Um, <clears throat> so G GPS is a really popular feature for us. GPS tracking, as well as um, the ability to create GPS punch zones, where say you could create a zone at work, and then when employees are enter that zone, um, they can they can then clock in and out. Um, you know, those are probably some of the bigger features we have. Uh, we do have a, a, a basic scheduler built in uh, that sure. allows shift scheduling that allows you to set up shift schedules for your employees and publish it out, and then they can view it on their phone or on their computer. So those are probably the top four features that we use. Makes a lot of sense. Now, 
Are there integrations like with payroll systems and other types of uh, solutions? Yes, yes. So one of the biggest ones is QuickBooks. Uh, we okay. just finished up an ADP integration. Uh, we're working on a Square integration right now. Uh, we we integrate for the most part. Uh, all all payroll platforms can be pushed time. We can push time to them. Yeah, at the baseline, we we can always use a CSV format. So sure. you know, it's a pretty. We have a generic format that they can all bring in. Um, yeah, so so that's the easiest way to get over, get time over. Although we still have a lot of people that even though we do have all these integrations, they still manually type those numbers over. And we're trying to move them away from that. Um, but, sure. you know, they, that is definitely still happening, we can see. Um, it's the minority, but it still happens. Got it, got it. And obviously a QuickBooks integration is, is huge. Uh, yeah. I, I think all SMBs run on QuickBooks, right? A lot so, do. Yeah, yeah we, so at, at a high do. level, that's great. Now, um, in the in the early days, as you were getting the product and some of those initial customers you were talking about on the platform, mm -hmm. what what were some of the initial challenges you had as you were scaling things up? I would say the initial challenges were <clears throat> really just getting the customers. You know, back then it was twenty years ago, right? So People didn't search for product on the internet like they do now so much. They did, but it's you know, the first place you go now when you're looking for a software product is the internet, right? Sure. You don't go to stores. You don't, you know, that, that doesn't happen. Um, so, you know, we focused real heavily. I focused real heavily on SEO at the time. I had to learn it. I, I, I was not an SEO mastermind by any means. Sure. So I spent a lot of time learning SEO, uh, optimizing the pages and uh just learning how to uh marketing i had to learn marketing you know i had to figure out how to uh create uh compelling uh pages that would entice the the user or the potential customer to sign up sure um so that was probably some of the bigger challenges back then um you know we got a lot of feedback in the early days and we made a lot of product adjustments uh early on the first few years we never really stopped we're still making upgrades and adjustments, little bug fixes, those types of things. So those were probably the top two or three main challenges. Yeah, and I think I think that's one of the, the wonderful things about software as a service being a customer is that, you know, all of these tweaks, updates, you know, fixes are constantly pushed out. So, you know, you're subscribing once and the solution is constantly evolving and mm -hmm new new integrations happen behind the scenes so that that's really great are there any um recent um you know uh, things that you've pushed out for features that you're really proud of that you wanted to share with our listeners so i would say probably the uh, the biggest most recent one would be our adp run integration so we had pulled our customers and found that uh, a pretty good percentage of them use ADP and AD, ADP run specifically. ADP run is the SMB version for ADP. Um, sure. So that was a pretty big rollout. Uh, uh, ADP is is pretty strict with their with their guidelines for integrations, which is good because, you know, it really forced us to, to, uh, to cross all our T's and dot all our I's. <clears throat> so, so that was probably the biggest one. And we made it really easy. You can uh, from on the clock, you can go into your settings page and connect to ADP, uh, or you can go the other way too. You can go from ADP to us. And once you're connected, it's really super easy. There's a button on our time cards page. So you get to your pay period you want to, to push over. You see all your hours. You verify everything's right. You click the button. Hours transfer over to ADP. You go over to ADP. We do have an ADP single sign-on as well, so it's really easy for you to get into your ADP account from from us. Sure, and your hours are there, and you just run payroll as normal. So, and you know, it, it's interesting having spoken with so many different founders of different software solutions, and a lot of times, you know, it's it's how the company embraces the uh, compliance or, or structure that they need to go through to get to that next step if it's you know sso or you know SOC 2 compliance or going for a schedule b you know for mm -hmm. a corporation wh whatever it is a lot of these these events are are really um changing for companies you know some some companies will 
try to just do the minimum just to achieve compliance, you know, whether it's for security or what have you. And others really embrace the change and, and become better for having gone through the process. Mm-hmm. And uh, it sounds like that you were in that latter group. De- definitely with the, um, the ADP integration and honestly with the QuickBooks integration, which we did, gosh, that was must have been eight, nine years ago now. That was sure. one of our first ones. Uh, we really had to, uh, we, the compliance was a really big deal with them as well. Uh, sure. They're a lot more strict now, but even back then, you know, we had to do security scans and code reviews and, uh, and it really uh, forced us to just really pay attention and, and understand that compliance really can be your friend. You know, it doesn't have to be the enemy. Yeah, um, absolutely. You know, it's there for a reason. Sometimes it's a hindrance. I get it. But, you know, if you want to play, play in the real world, it's, it's a good idea to pay attention to that. Yeah, no, and obviously it's a competitive advantage as you mm-hmm. check each of these off your uh, your list. Um, yes. What would you say, like, as the product has evolved over the years, what what were some of the, the major milestones or, or feature additions that you've had over the years that, that you're proud of? Yeah, so over the years, um, <clears throat> probably one of the biggest ones was the we had mentioned in the beginning that it was a web-based uh, system, right? Sure. So we didn't have a phone app at that time. Uh, I, I we started hearing from our customers that they wanted phone apps. That's when apps became popular, uh, you know, ten, fifteen years ago. So probably the, one of the biggest additions that we did over that period is the phone app, and it's really been a really you got to have one nowadays, right? I mean, it's not really even sure. an option. Um, but you know, we can see that a, a, a majority of our users are on the phone app at this point. So, uh, they are, you know, we still have a, a lot of people using the, the website as well, but yeah. uh, the, the overwhelming majority of our customers uh, and employees use the app. So that was probably the biggest milestone that we've added, uh, probably a little before that in the very beginning, back in the 2005 era, which is a long time ago now. Um, we didn't have a PTO system in place, a proper PTO system. So it was relatively crude, I guess you might say. But sure. when we added PTO, uh, paid time off, uh, requests, approvals, uh, I did automatic addition to time cards. And that was a, a big, uh, I would say a big time saver for our customers. They really, it really delivered value to them. And the employees liked it because they could just request time right from their browser at that point. Uh, so those two were pretty big, I'd say, and then really those two items, uh, happened really before what I was calling us a real company, right? That was kind of more of when it was a passion project of mine. Sure. And the phone app happened right around the time, a little bit before it became a, you know, quote, real company. Um, so, and then I would say the next major milestone was, was when, uh, I had decided basically to. Uh, rehome all of my consulting customers and really all in, I had a couple other small entrepreneurial type businesses going on and really just focusing on, on the clock. So once I started putting my energy into it and my brother, Mark came on board, uh, as a partner, uh, that's when we started to see things really grow. So, you know, and, and at that point, you know, we realized we needed some help and we, we hired Samantha, who was our first employee. She's still with us. She's now in customer success. She's, she's sure. awesome. Um, and, uh, that, so those would probably be the three big, big milestones I'd say. Now, obviously you, you have more of a technical background. Um, as far as your brother, Mark, what, what type of background does he have coming into the the business? So what's really interesting is Mark and I have almost identical career paths. Um, you know, we both are technical. Uh, we both were developers. We both had consulting companies. Uh, neither of us went to school. Um, sure. High, how we uh, college. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, so we had very similar paths. It was actually worked out really good because when when he came on board, I knew we needed the phone app, but I didn't have the bandwidth to create one. And he was like, "Well, I'll come on board and, and I'll I'll do the app." He Start the there, app. yeah. So it worked. It worked out really, really nice. And like day to day in terms of. Um hats that that you wear where where do you find most of your time is spent versus his time uh you know how how do things get divvied up sure so we've really evolved a lot um currently we had just 
uh, created a what we're calling a leadership chart. You might know it as an org chart sure. um, last year. And I found out that I actually fill four full-time roles, <laughs> um, <laughs> which was kind of interesting. Yeah. Um, you know, so it's uh, CEO, uh, product director, product manager, as well as uh, development manager. So those are the four roles that I'm currently filling. Um, uh, we are looking to, I am spread a little thin with those four roles. Sure. Uh, so I'm actually looking to, we're actually looking in the process of uh, a couple hires for a couple of those. So to get some, some uh, 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 more talent in place. Uh, Mark, on the other hand, he is the VP and CFO. So he still does a little bit of coding. Uh, he's actually been doing a little bit more recently with some infrastructure things, uh, Salesforce implementations and such. Um, but uh, he handles all the finances and a lot of the compliance and you know money side type things sure so yeah. as the business has scaled the number of companies the number of users um would you say that um the growth of the business has accelerated stabilized like what how how is the the growth as the number of users has has uh, grown sure We've had pretty steady growth. Um, we're seeing a little edge off this last uh, year or so. Um, it seems to be, you know, we're, we're working on it, of course. Uh, there's a lot going on in the market out there. We're hearing a lot from other SaaS companies as well. Sure. Uh, but we're starting to see, we're still growing, but it's not quite at the pace that we want uh, or at the pace that we were used to. So, so we're, we're working real hard on that actually right now. Um, so where where do um like how do new companies find you? I guess that that's a good question. Is it sure? Uh, several places. Uh, web search is is one. Um, sure. You know, Google Google search or Bing. Sometimes they'll find us through um, App Store. You know we get a, a lot of new accounts and signups through the App Stores, uh, Apple and uh, Android, and uh, word of mouth is a big one. Uh, yeah. We don't have it up there now, but we, we did have an ask when people sign up, where did you hear about us? And a lot of them said a friend. Oh, that's um, great. We also noticed that a lot of customers come from uh, new hires. So, so for instance, a, an employee would have used on the clock at their old company, okay. came to their new company, sure. and uh, you know, maybe they are, their time tracking isn't very good or non-existent, and they recommend us. So that's always, always a nice Okay. Thing. No, that's yeah. great. So yeah, yeah we've definitely and, heard, you know, I've talked to business owners and I always ask, where did you hear about us? And they're like, oh, well, you know, my new employee told me about you. Oh, that's really nice. Thank I you. love it. And that, that's so interesting because, you know, probably, um, and one of the things we were chatting about before we started uh, the broadcast was, you know, what is it like on the other end in terms of employees? Do they embrace the solution? Do they resist it in terms of management? The same, same question there. So. What do you say on, on both ends between employees and management? Yeah, so I, I really would say, you know, it, it's hard to say. It depends on the group because we definitely see some uh, companies sign up. They'll add their employees and they're often using it in a day or two. Um, and so is, is that just a, a company with a really good culture where, where there's trust and the employees trust their management and they, they're not worried about, you know, that their big brother, you know, big brother effect or something along those lines. Um, and I've personally talked to the other side too, to where, you know, we've downloaded, uh, we, we've got everybody to download the app, but we just can't get anybody to use it. They're worried about us tracking their time and, you know, those types of things. So it's, I, I would have to chalk it up more to the company culture of our customer. You know, is it, is, is there a distrust in the company and are you, have you maybe allowed, and I do know this happens because I've talked to customers that have had this happen. They have said that our employees, we know our employees are, are clocking more hours than they're working. And we know we're overpaying, but it's okay because we need to, we need to get the work done. Um, and it, to me, that just sounds crazy, right? Sure. Um, but what happens is if you try to bring time clock, you know, time tracking into that atmosphere, well, guess what you're going to have? You know, it's, the employees are going to really resist. So I think a lot of it has to do with the, the culture of the company. Yeah, and, and I would think, you know, at a high level, obviously, you know, you want it to be equitable on both ends. You don't want either side to be taking advantage of of no. a system or a lack lack of system, you know, in, in either way. So do you have like some 
I guess, best practices that, that you suggest to companies that are, you know, maybe taking their first step towards time tracking to, to make it successful sure. as they roll it out? Yeah, yeah. I, it, well, we all, we're, we're actually, we have a working in a document to help employers with this right now as well, or an updated one. We have one, but we're working on updating it. But for me, it's really about, you know, start by being honest and transparent, right? Even before you, you sign up, you know, let everybody know ahead of time. Hey, just so you guys know, next month, we're going to start doing, or we're going to start tracking time and just tell them why uh, and be honest. You know, it's, that there's several reasons. One, well, reason number one is it saves so much time. There, it's about six minutes to, to calculate a time card for a manager, and and then there's a two or three percent error rate. So you know, the time and errors saved by doing this in a more modern fashion is one really good reason. Um, uh, two is uh, that you know it's 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 good for you to know how many hours you're working. Uh, you know, you should know, you know, there's so we've heard the story so many times to where employees just clock in and out or they just write hours down and, you know, they're, they're estimating hours and, you know, there's no transparency. Uh, and three, it is required by, by law it's to track time. So, it, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, a compliance issue. So, you know, uh, I heard the story, uh, just a couple of weeks ago, a friend of mine who's in payroll. Uh, there was a company local to us, actually, it was a restaurant, I think, and they got fined like hundreds of thousands of dollars um, due to, 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 to back pay missing and you know, for the last 10 years or something. They had no time cards. <laughs> and um, he said the funny thing was, it might not have been hundreds of thousands of dollars, but it was approaching $100,000. Sure. <clears throat> Excuse me. And, and he says, you know, the funny thing is, after all that went down, went through all this for several months, guess what they did? They went back to no time tracking. <laughs> oh, you kidding? It's crazy thing yeah. I've ever heard. No, you know, obviously. Like, really? He said they yeah. were this company, this particular company, would rather just pay the fine. And I have no idea why you'd want to pay $100,000 a box. Like, yeah, hard, you know, hard to whatever. change old habits. But no, at, at a high level, obviously, compliance, it's it's important on that, that end. And, you know, having documentation for, for anything, you know, mm -hmm. should an audit or should something like that come up is is invaluable so you mm -hmm. know, being able to document what you have done so uh so that's that's really interesting and do you have uh, you know for some of our listeners that may have been you know following either your solution or looking to implement a solution like this do you have um a, a few stories you know maybe of, of some actual customers that you could share with us or there's some stories of some scenarios where companies have implemented on the clock and, and what their, you know, feedback was on, on getting up and running? Sure. Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> so one story was actually a good friend of mine, Pat. Uh, he's a, he runs a local machine shop. Uh, uh, I, him and I uh, spend time together uh, up north a lot in, in the summer. And I've been telling him for years, I'll give you a free account. Just use on the clock and just give me some feedback, you know. Um, or don't give me feedback, but just use it for your employees. I think he has about 15 people or something like that. Sure. And, um, you know, three years later, uh, he finally did it. Um, and that was, this was earlier this year, I believe. And uh, he got, he got the, he, you know, he, he signed up on, online on the web browser and he configured his account. He called in and talked to some of our support people. That's one thing that's really great about us. If you, if you call, we answer. Um, and, or if not, we'd call you right back, but most of the time we're able to answer. And he talked to them for a few minutes. Uh, they set him right up and his employees were in there. And he he had a little bit of employee pushback uh, at, at first, and but he worked through it. You know, he was persistent, just took a few days. And after that, you know, everybody was clocking in and out. And he was like, it's so great. You know, my hours are just there. I, I don't have to like write things down and hunt numbers down from my employees and get text messages or however it is they he collected time sure. and he said hours right there and i ran payroll and it was just beautiful and i'm like yeah i've been telling you this for three years <laughs> i was, I was <laughs> joking of course but yeah. he's like yeah yeah i know and um and then the story gets even better because uh and then he's going on you know a couple of weeks later he's like hey i found out you guys have pto and uh, I'm like, yeah, yeah, you should use it. And he's like, yeah, I started using it last week. It's so great. Now my, you know, my team just requests 
you know, a vacation time and I can approve or deny it. And if I approve it, it gets added to the time card. He's like, it's so great. And I just, I told him about a few of the other features too. And you know, he just started using, like we have messaging. He started using, it's like a text messaging app. Um, he started using that with his employees and uh, to communicate. So, you know, they weren't, he, for whatever reason, they, they don't want to use their personal phone for text. So, uh, so we was using that. So there was kind of like this period of a discovery for about a month or so where every time he would discover a new feature that was applicable to him, you know, we have hundreds of little things in there, right? He would, he would call or text me and say, Hey, I found out this new thing. And he was always offering suggestions too, which was really nice. I love to hear feedback. Sure. Um, yeah. So yeah, that was one story. Um, let's see. There was another story. Oh, I forget her name. Uh, she was a small doctor, I think down in Georgia, uh, just opened her practice and, um, you know, Southern lady, uh, I talked to her on the phone for about half an hour. Uh, and she had just opened her practice. She was open for about a year and she had just hired her first employee. Uh, and, uh, she was, so we have free accounts for one and two employees. And so she was just telling me how, how she uses that, how when her employee comes in, she set up a, a, a geofence. So you, you could use, you could only clock in and out at work. She was concerned about that. So, um, so she set that up and she was real happy about that. And she was happy about the PTO as well. Um, she was using a couple other features. I don't remember which they were at, off the top of my head, but. Um, yeah, I think those were the main ones, but either way, so she had, uh, she was just so happy that we, we were offering this free account for, for her. And she's like, well, I can't wait to pay you. I can't wait till I grow. And, you know, you know, it'll be, you know, I want to keep using you. And my, my, my one employee really likes the system. She can see her hours. She can cross PTO. I think they were using the schedule. So she might've been using the schedule as well. So. That was really nice to hear, you know, yeah. we do offer that one to two employees for free. So that's a, it's nice to have a little philanthropy there. Sure. Sure. No. And that, that's great. And I can tell you from my last operation that I ran, you know, we had employees working in different, different warehouses and different departments. And, you know, prior to using a solution like this, I can tell you the challenge, you know, obviously everyone expects to get paid and paid on time. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, if people are working, you know, hourly, the, uh, the challenge is if, you know, you will allow the opportunity to submit hours, you know, anytime, you know, it, it always happens at the last moment. So being able to track, track hours, you know, consistently through, through a solution like this is huge because it allows the whole HR process to run really smoothly. Everyone gets paid on time everything's accurate you know so i can uh can testify to that it's it's a fantastic uh solution now you also um kind of hinted at um at culture and all of that can can you tell me a little bit about the team culture at on the clock and you know what what it's like to work there in terms of uh you know people that are are on board sure um i can back up a a, a couple steps Back when I was doing consulting, uh, you know, I worked for these couple dozen small businesses here in the, in the metro area. And I worked with the team in the front offices, right? The, the bosses, the managers, CEOs, those types. And then I would almost unilaterally work out back with the hourly employees as well. And being working with these people for years on end, you know, I got to be friends and somewhat acquaintances with both, both teams, right? And, um, but I always noticed that not always, but there was a, definitely a pattern of this, um, the, the people out back really just almost despise the people up front, maybe not despise, but like, oh, they never work. They're always golfing. They're always in meetings, sure. you know, they're not, they're not working. And you go, I go up front and, you know, work with the people up front and, uh, and they had the same thing to say about the people out back. Oh, they're always late. You know, there was always this like you know, fight, it seemed, between them. And um, I really didn't like that. And I actually really had made a decision that I was not going to have employees at all, uh, ever, really. <clears throat> um, and then, you know, I think I softened up a little bit and I started realizing, you know, I need some help. Um, so, you know, I really made a, a, a vow to myself that, you know, if we do do this, we're going to have a good culture. Um, and so, you know, one of the things that we do is you know we have values we these are these really stem from my values but you know i went around to the office and talked to a lot of people 
and, and really try to build it as our values. Mm -hmm. And the first one is you know, passion for people, right? So, you know, we actually, we have five goals as well in our company. They're internal, so they're not public facing. The, the, the values are public facing. But goal number one uh, is build us up and that's build our teams up. So, you know, we do things in house, like, you know, we're always trying to elevate people's careers. We're, we do our best to hire internally if possible. Um, we do, we bring in training uh, for individual departments. Uh, we, we encourage um, uh, book, uh, book club. We actually, that's another uh, really fun thing we do. We do book club. Um, uh, with with not everybody, but we read a book sure. and do a report and such on it. And so, and the the other thing that's a really big deal is that what we do is we try to. Sorry, I'm trying to silence my my beeping. It's the end of the day <laughs> on Friday. I, this is another cool thing about culture. On Friday at five o'clock, we have this team chat, and everybody just says has a good weekend and shares emojis yeah. and all this stuff. I love that's it. what's happening right now. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. beeping in the background. There you I go, apologize. right on cue. Um, uh, but we, we really try to bring back the work you do to the, to the meaning that it has to the customer. Um, right. So we spend a lot of time at work, you know, at, at least 40 hours generally. Right. Uh, should we go home at the end of the day feeling like we, A, accomplished something and B, we were impactful for some, for, you know, on other people? Yes, we should. Um, you know, it's, uh, you know, th it's so important that you feel that your work means something and that you're not just working for, for nothing. Um, uh, and it, you know, to it, it affects other people's lives. So I'd say those three things are some, some pretty, pretty big things that we do internally. To, That's to great. And that culture. yeah. And obviously, you know, uh, let's face it, you can't be everywhere and you can't do everything. So, you know, bringing aboard, you know, the right quality of, of, of people taking care of, of your people and making sure that everyone feels mm -hmm. uh, like they're, they're contributing to a higher, higher level um, purpose, you know, overall is, is so important. And uh, you know, and that, that, that's huge. Um, so for customers that are, are interfacing with on the clock that may need some support or some help, what are the different ways in which they can reach out to uh, to be in touch to to get the help they need? Sure. Uh, so we have uh, three, four ish ways to to uh, to reach us or to get help. Um, live help. I mean, we have a help section, of course. Um, uh, you know, you can access that anytime. Sure. Uh, but from a, a more of a semi live or a live and semi live standpoint, uh, we definitely have a phone number, an eight 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 number. Uh, and that is available from 8.30 to 5, uh, Monday through Friday. Um, and like, like we were talking earlier, we pick up the phone. That's kind of a, you know, most people, not most, but a lot of people are like, oh, you actually picked up the phone. I didn't expect that. That's so old school, that right? <laughs> yeah. Being able to it's pick so, up the it's phone. So it's such neat. an antiquated uh, uh, model nowadays, right? <laughs> yeah, um, absolutely. Uh, but but it, our customers really like it. Um, email, of course, you know, we, you can always email us. Uh, we do live chat again from 830 to five. Um, uh, probably the third way is webinars. Uh, we do webinars throughout the week where, where you can sign up and then learn about, learn about different topics. Oh, fantastic. That, yeah. that is, uh, that's huge. And, um, as far as things that are on your roadmap that, that you can share publicly, are there things that you're working on that, that you're really excited about that you hope, uh, hope to be introducing, uh, in the near future? Yeah, there's a couple of things we're going through. Some of these are back end, but they have some front end components, meaning back end, it is a, um, non customer facing upgrade. So as we talked earlier, this was built in 2003, four era. So that is, uh, it was built on an older technology, um, uh, older programming technology. So we are currently in what we're calling internally V2. So uh, my dev team and I are doing some really major hurdles to do what we call a move and improve process. Sure. Um, to where we're, we're clicking off different features and different web pages on the website uh, and moving them over uh, sub two, three, four at a time. Uh, so the customer gets a better experience uh, and, and gets uh, some upgrades along the way. So that's a really big deal. Uh, we're doing a very similar thing in the app as well. We're, we're moving to a new technology for our app, a new 
programming environment, if you will. Sure. Um, it's called Maui. <laughs> and uh, that is in place right now as well. So those are two major projects that are going on now. They do, they both offer some, some pretty significant customer upgrades, uh, but I'll, it's probably 25% customer upgrade for every page. They have 75% back end, just technology upgrade for us. Sure. Um, and then um, one thing we actually just released, we did a full redesign of our PTO system. So, so that was, uh, that went out just a couple of weeks ago, actually. Uh, that was part of the move and improve. So we spent a lot of time up front uh, talking to customers, understanding their needs, uh, talking to HR people, and and really reformatted uh, the way those pages were. So that was more of a that was that one was way more improved than move, but it, it, that one really serviced a lot of people really well. We got some good feedback on it. So so from where you sit in the uh, the market space, what what do you see? as some of the higher level trends that you see coming coming up or, or even here now in the employee time time tracking space? Sure. Some of the things we're seeing is is multi-product. So, you know, if you think about a small business, uh, you know, a 20, 30, 40 person shop, you know, what kind of what do they need, right? Um, sure. Along with time tracking. So, you know, one thing a lot of times they need is the scheduling if they're not a set schedule. So one of the things that we are going to be working on is we have a, I would say, a simple to mid, mid-level mid scheduling software. So that will be getting a major upgrade. Okay. Um, one of the big things that sit the, our, a sister product of ours that we were just talking about earlier, ADP and um, QuickBooks, is payroll. So yep. uh, they, a lot, there's four or five companies right now that are offering what's called embedded payroll. So Embedded payroll is where you can take the payroll and build it right into your system. So you do, the customer never has to leave on the clock to run payroll. So they, they would just literally go and run their hours. They would click run payroll and they would do everything right in the website to this point. Uh, so that's, that's another feature. Um, <clears throat> you know, things like task management. Uh, that, that's another things that, thing that some, a lot of these 30, 40, uh, uh, employee, uh, type companies would need. So right. I'm looking to build some of that in, in the future, uh, uh, HR functions, you know, employee onboarding, uh, offboarding, those types of things, uh, as well as, you know, one-on-ones, uh, reviews, you know, quarterly or annual reviews, having some documentation in there of that, um, celebrations, you know, birthdays and anniversaries, that type of stuff. Yeah, so, so a lot of some of the things that are on the roadmap. Yeah, a lot of creature creature comforts that probably yeah. are features that that would add you know value to a lot of the people who are already on the platform. And obviously, taking customer feedback is that a big part of where a lot of the the enhancements come from, or is a lot of it driven by the team? Or yeah, it's it's both, right? So you know, if you you got to you got to watch that because if you just develop what customers want, um, you can you can you can really pollute your platform. <laughs> sure, um, you can end up with second. a Frankenstein, right? <laughs> yeah, a lot there of one-off just, features that may not be of value. Yes, yes. Years ago, I saw this um, uh, video. Uh, I think it was Microsoft Word. They turned on like every feature, you know, like uh, all the buttons on the top, and it filled the entire page. You didn't even have room to type your document in. Um, so, uh, the point is, is that you, you have to listen to customers, right? But you also have to, um, you have to keep your eyes on the market, uh, competitors as well. Uh, we're not competitor focused, but we do definitely keep our eyes there. Uh, and sure. just really kind of keep your eyes on the, the emerging trends, right? So it's something like embedded payroll. Um, nobody has ever asked for that. However, when we pulled our customers, a huge majority of them said yes. So, you know, you know, they've never asked for it, but they want it. They, they just hadn't made the connection the, the way we did. So we need to make that connection for them is what, what, what our goal is. Sure. And obviously customers vote with their dollars at the end of the day, but, mm-hmm. but um, you know, a lot of uh, different opportunities are, are there. So at a high level, we'll leave a, a link in the show notes for anybody that would like to get started with on the clock but um can you tell me how is the product licensed how would a company decide how to get started with the solution are there different you know different levels of access or is it per user or per company or 
Sure. And so it's, it's very simple pricing. We, we, we tried our best to keep it as simple as possible. It's $3 and 50 cents per employee. So that, so if you have uh, 10 employees, it's, it's 35 bucks a month and it does go down from there. Um, so the more employees you have, uh, it will, it will start to go down uh, a few pennies per employee. Um, we do not charge for administrators or for managers. So there are three user levels. There's the employee level, and then there is an admin level. So admins have rights over everything, of course. And then there's a manager level. So we do not charge for the admins and managers. Um, to sign up, you could just go to our website. It, it will be in the show notes as well on the sure. uh, Click uh, try it free. And it, it's a free 30-day trial. And you can then add your employees. It's fully functional during that time. Uh, you can add your employees. You can set up PTO. You can use a schedule. You can use every single feature. There, there's, there's nothing locked down. And uh, if you decide to use us, all the features are still available. So there are no levels of uh, feature usage. You know, there's not like a, you know, a gold, bronze, and copper level or whatever. Um, sure. It, it's all included for three dollars and fifty cents per employee. So. Fantastic. Well, I think yeah. that that's really helpful, and I think we covered a lot of ground there. Hopefully, uh, yeah. we've answered a lot of the questions people were wondering, and uh, I actually took the liberty of including some questions that some people from our community had asked. Uh, so I think we we covered covered quite a bit. Um, coming up on our our next episode, uh, Sean Legaduke is the co-founder and CEO of Outforce, an AI-powered sales engagement platform. He's going to be joining us, and he has a background in enterprise software sales. Uh, Sean launched Outforce to help sales teams automate prospecting and outreach. His platform uses machine learning to optimize messaging and targeting. Prior to Outforce, Sean held sales leadership roles at Salesforce, Oracle, and startup uh, troops.ai. So be sure to visit our website, softwareoasis.com, to access our free weekly newsletter and sign up for our upcoming 2024 webinar series. So with that, uh, Dean, thank you so much for joining us on the podcast today. Yeah, thank you, Michael. And to all you listeners out there, make sure you subscribe. I did. <laughs> I'm making go. my way down the list. I love it. I love it. All right, all right.